Hi, everybody. Welcome to uh, Men Having Babies webinar on um, the pressure to represent. We have some amazing dads lined up today to talk about their experiences in parenthood. Um, before we get started and while we give some time for everybody to join, um, I want to say a big thank you to everybody for coming here to speak and for you guys attending. My name is Lisa Schuster. I'm the Director of Programming here at Men Having Babies. If this is your first time attending one of our events, uh, we hope to see you back again. Um, feel free to check out our website, menhavingbabies.org, for a lot more about our um, programming from uh, educational conferences uh, to wonderful events like this. Um, what we do is help you guys become dads and help form that community for you um, on your journey to parenthood and beyond. So we always love to see you at, uh, at future events. So don't hesitate to uh, sign up for the next one I, and we'll see you there. Getting us started tonight. Um, I know you didn't come to hear me speak. Um, so I'm gonna turn it over to the dads. If you guys have questions um, or, um, or anything as we go through, feel free to use our chat or to use the Q&A um, and the dads will address it. But I'm gonna turn it over um, to the wonderful Jan and Alex um, and have us get started tonight. Hello, everybody. Thank We're you, Lisa. Apparently, the wonderful Jan. That's Jan. That's me. And I'm Alex. It's it's wonderful to uh, spend this time with you guys. Um, we generally start all of these types of things off with introductions of everybody who's participating. We're not going to do that. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to jump immediately into the lightning round of questions. After which we will get to introduce all of these wonderful uh, dads. Before that, I would just want to add that if you guys have any questions to any one of these dads, uh, please type them up in the uh, Q and A. Um, we'll go back to them if if not during uh, towards the end of the of the interview discussion, whatever. I'm used to saying show, but it's the show. The end of the show. Welcome right? to the show. All, all right, right, here we go. Um, so what I'm going to do is I am going to play the role starting out of Linda. So who is this question for? I'll tell you just okay. a minute. I'm getting there. It's all part of the it's all part of the plan. Um, Linda, I'm I'm Linda. Um, walks up to Ben um, in the uh, at the park where he's playing with his kid, and says, "Oh." Is it mom's day off? Ben? I say, what do I say? Yeah. Uh, no, but my husband is uh, is taking the day off. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> Good, clean, simple answer. Let's Cut to the chase. Up. Let's step it up for a minute for Austin. Hi, Austin. Okay. Uh, now I'm Julia. I don't know. I made up these names. I, I specifically avoided using the name Karen because poor Karen has been horribly weighted down recently. Um, don't you think it's important for a child to have a woman as a parent? Well, Julia, um, I don't think so. I think our daughter will have a lot of positive female role, mo role models in her life. And she doesn't necessarily need a mother. She could have an aunt or a best friend or someone who will help her with all of all of the things that girls need growing up. Stay good. Okay, um, we're gonna move on to BJ. Um, <clears throat> Joe says, "Look, I have no problem with you being gay or whatever, really, but." It doesn't seem like an environment to raise children. I'm just saying. Mind your own business, Joe. <laughs> okay, perfectly legit. All right, <laughs> now, now I'm Ethel. All right, Bill, I don't know, Bill. I'm sorry, uh, Ethel, how did you do it? How did you make kids though? Um, <laughs> so it's different for me because I have one from a first marriage with a woman, with my ex-wife the old fashioned way. And then, <laughs> um, and then through surrogates. So um, I just, I, I have no problem just telling them that, you know, Charlie was born via surrogacy. Good. And my last question, um, Joey, is from Jose. I saw on Instagram that you and your kids were at the gay pride parade. You think, uh, you think they should be there? And all those pictures of them that live on forever on the internet. What do you think? Is that okay? Well, first of all, it, 
are, are you referring to, is it okay for them to be on Instagram, like their images on Instagram or the fact that they're attending Pride? What's the- well, It's more of a pride thing. More of a pride thing, okay. Great. I think anyone who asks about that, I think the response would be, I think it is okay because this way they get to learn that there's different types of people everywhere and that love is love and we need to celebrate everybody's true colors in whatever color, shape, way or form that they come in. I don't know. This is like kind of a slam dunk as far as my definition is concerned. And, and uh, the, the reason why I would say is, I don't know if all of you will agree with me, but I think that uh, parenting uh, has a tendency to make people, men, a little bit milder. If you had asked me these questions five years ago before my kids were born, I think my response would have been a whole lot less metered and thoughtful than your responses were. I'm not sure if you feel the same way. But with those answers, I would love to go around and have each one of you introduce yourselves and tell us a little bit about, I don't know, what, what you got. Let's start with Ben. Uh, so yeah, my name's Ben Holiday McCann. Um, me and my husband, Eric, live in Grand Rapids, Michigan. And we had our daughter, Evie, last year. Um, she just celebrated her one-year birthday um, just three weeks ago. And uh, yeah, we are we love being dads. All right, DJ. So I am uh, here in Toronto. Hello, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Uh, so my husband, uh, Frank, and I, we have a seven-year-old son. He just turned seven. Uh, his name is Milo. He was born during World Pride. Uh, so every year, he thinks the Pride parades and all the floats and everything are for his birthday because uh, we, we go down to Pride. So that question for Pride, we actually go down to Pride with them and celebrate Family Pride. Uh, but I'm a high school teacher. I teach cooking. Um, we wrote a children's book. We have a website, Families About Love. And we're just there to show everybody that all families are different and we all have love. Cool. All right, Bill. Hey, everyone. Uh, I'm Bill Tamlin from St. Paul, Minnesota, um, which is right next to Minneapolis, but people don't often make that connection. Um, so I am a single dad, two boys. Um, I have a 21-year-old in Liam, and um, who's an adult, and um, and then I have um, five-year-old Charlie who was born uh, via surrogacy, and um, I was going to talk about what I do, but that's boring. I'd rather talk about them. They're just like the lights of my life, and um, just happy to be here. Joey, hey, so yeah, so I'm Joey Guzman Couple, and um, I'm from San Diego, California. Uh, my husband and I. Uh, gave, um, we welcomed our daughter almost two years ago. So we have a daughter, her name is Camila. And, um, and we love being dads. It's, it's, a, it's a whirlwind for sure, uh, but it's, it's, it's so uh, amazing to just get to see her grow and, and become her own little person. Um, and I'm also a marriage and family therapist. So I work with a lot of couples all over uh, who are going through surrogacy and, and I love doing that. So it was her, it was my daughter's birth that really inspired me to transition from doing severe mental health to doing mental health for third party reproduction. Cool. And last but not least, Austin. Yeah, hey everyone. I'm here from Canada, Alberta. And we had, my husband and I had our daughter through surrogacy just over 13 months ago. Uh, so we're recently new dads and we're dealing with all the obstacles that come with giving up a huge portion of your life to look after your child, which I'm sure we've all gone through. Um, <laughs> I am an engineer. Uh, that's my day job. And luckily enough, here in Canada, we get some great parental benefits. So I've, we get up to 16 months off. So my husband took the first eight months. I'm taking the second eight months. And I'm just enjoying being a dad right now. It's honestly amazing. When, when we got, we had pretty good parental leave, the company I was working for, but I went back to work after the weekend because I so desperately wanted to get in the car and drive away. Um, yeah. yeah. So, um, well, wait, we're talking about what? You didn't quickly introduce yourself. We didn't do us. Oh, uh, so we are a married couple. We have five and a half year old twins, uh, hence the craziness and the one to, uh, Drive away. Drive away. Um, we host a podcast for gay dads and for prospective dads. It's called Daddy Squared. Um, it's been, we just finished the fourth season of the show. 
and we're very much happy to be here and, and talk about this such an important, I think, important subject. Um, and I want to jump sure. right into the discussion. So to me, the pressure to represent uh, throws, throws me off to, um, to the issue of stigma about gay dads. I look at on Instagram and, you know, and on social media, and I feel that there is a specific stereotype and stigma around gay dads. I want you guys to talk about, I want to hear from each one of you. What do you think the stigma around gay dads and what do you think real life is? So what do you think people see versus what is the truth? Let's start with Bill. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I mean, I think that it feels like people's stereotypes come from either like, you know, experiences they've had in real life or what they've seen on TV or in the media and whatnot. And then I think they shift that over to when they see gay dads on social media. And it's like, oh, well, you know, they're obviously going to teach their kids about fashion and disco and <laughs> interior decorating and all this stuff, you know, which isn't a bad thing and you should do anyway. But, um, <laughs> but um, I think that's their stereotypes is that they think like, okay, well, this child is not going to get a well-rounded upbringing because, you know, gay, gay men, gay dads, gay men in particular, you know, it's like they see these stereotypes around us and it's like, well, that's obviously what they're going to do with their kids, not realizing that, you know, the kids are going to want to do what the kids are going to want to do. And, you know, I mean, you can, I mean, mine wants to disco dance, but anyway, but the other pieces of it is just, you know, they're going to do what they want to do. You, it's a good parent, regardless whether you're gay or not you're gonna to want to um, help cultivate their interests and things like that. And so I think that's probably part of our challenge is dispelling those myths, dispelling those stereotypes by showing kids just being kids and us just being dads and loving them and you know helping them follow their own passions. Austin, is that the same for you? Yeah, I feel like just social platforms in general, you always want to put your best foot forward. So whether you're a gay dad or any type of parent or anyone on a social platform, you're going to post photos of the best moments of your life. You're not going to be taking photos when you're struggling or when you're up at midnight and you have bags under your eyes and you feel like a zombie. You're only going to represent those best portions of your life. So it, it gives a really skewed perspective of the life of just a parent in general, because you're not posting those moments when you are vulnerable. I love the ones, by the way, it's not entirely true, right? Everybody wants to post pictures of themselves exhausted from parenting. So they put on a lot of makeup and they get the lighting just right and everything. And then they lay there with their hand on the back like this <laughs> and they go, oh, it's so exhausting. And they look better than they do, like, you know, normally yeah, really walking down the street. Um, how about you, Ben? I, you know, the, the first thing that came to mind when, when we talk about like media representation of gay dads is like Modern Family. Like that was a, such a, you know, big show. And you know, my husband and I watched that for a bit and we're just like, we are nothing like these, these guys, these, you know, and, and it's like, and that's, and that's okay. Right. Um, you know, as, as far as social media and stuff goes, like, you know, I definitely, um, I actually quit social media back in August, so like two months after Evie was born, just like no Facebook, no Instagram, nothing. Um, Cause there is a lot of pressure out there. You see other gay dads or other parents in general. And it does, there's this perception, like Austin said of like, oh, you know, these are the best moments. And I was like, man, I just don't feel this way. And, you know, it took a while to, to realize it's like, no, we're just gonna do our own thing. And we're gonna be the best parents that we can be for Evie. And, so far, that's been that's been serving us pretty well. Um, BJ, have you been um, approached uh, going out there, like from from young gay, saying "Ooh, daddy" when you were with a kid? To be honest, I get messages about that, but not out in public, especially not with when I'm with Milo or anything like that. Uh, but no, because I feel that there's a lot. <laughs> Like, I think it's easier, obviously, for people to communicate behind a computer screen and, and type messages to you rather than saying something to you in, your, in front of your face, right? Thank you. I feel that there's um, around the gay community toward dads. Like, there's something about the daddy. That's not a, well, there is a, an attraction knowing that you're a father figure and that you're nurturing somebody else, I feel. Because yeah. there's other dads, and I'm like, oh, hey, dad. You know what I mean? Like, I, I would do it myself, so... Look, I'd like to just suggest there's an alternate 
view as well, which is, yes, there is stigma, like the question that I opened us with, um, where, you know, straight people look at gay parents and they question whether is that okay, et cetera. But there is another angle too. And I don't know how much you guys have experienced this. Nothing legitimized me as a human being more than having kids. Nothing for good or for bad. Like before you have kids, you're a gay. After you have kids, you're a dad. And like, sure, there are questions, but like, you're now a solid member of the community as soon as you have, uh, I mean, I felt that at work. I worked for a very large corporation. And, you know, the minute I got back from parental leave, I was suddenly, I sensed a different uh, response to me. I was no longer like a fun, crazy gay guy. I was now a dad. I don't know if you guys have had similar experiences. I, from like friends and family, I think because we are two dads, right? And I, I think the whole stigma is also that men can't parent. Because a lot of the times, like we have a lot of straight friends and it's always the mom doing everything, right? Where the dad goes to work and the mom is taking care of the child and raising them and cooking and cleaning. But in our house, we share responsibilities. We're there, we go to swimming or we have soccer practice and we go, we both go together. Right. So I, and I think there is a lot of, um, uh, what's what I'm looking for? Not like interest to see how well we can parent and if we can actually succeed as two dads parenting a kid. Right. Yeah. And, and that's a good point that you raised, uh, the mom, because we often see ourselves in a group of moms. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I want to turn to you, Joe, in and ask you, do you feel that gay, gay dads from, I bet in your profession, you, uh, you also probably, uh, you know, get into this. Um, do you feel dads, gay dads compare themselves to the mothers, like want to prove that they're good enough to be parents because we're around moms all the time and we feel that we're being judged? I think that there is a tendency at times to compare ourselves to moms or what they're doing and what we are or what they're doing and what we're not. I think that there are already, there's like these, um, you know, societal and uh, familial and cultural norms that apply these pressures for you to kind of like compare yourselves to, you know, your the, the female figures and, and what they're doing and how is that going to impact your parenting. Um, I think that that can definitely happen. I think that in, in my household, what I found very early on is that even though there was two men, there was two dads, you know, in, in our family, um, that for some reason I ended up assuming role of like that female essence. Like my husband was more like the, what you would see in a heteronormal normative relationship. And I, that felt strange to me. And I was thinking, am, am I assuming this role because someone's expected to assume this role or, um, or, or what is it? It just, I, I honestly felt, and I remember I would have friends tell me when I would talk to them about like what I was doing, they're like, gosh, Joey, I don't mean this, you know, uh, in a bad way, but you're the mom. And I'm just like, oh, well, I don't, I don't see that as being offensive, but I think that to answer your question, I think, yes. Um, I think that um, you can definitely compare yourself and see like what you're doing, what you're lacking or just, yeah. And that can create a lot of a different type of pressure as well. Yeah, you know, I, I, I think that uh, we have the opportunity or the advantage as gay men to, th there are roles in parenting, right? I mean, somebody generally makes, uh, makes lunch uh, for the kid in the morning before the kid goes to, to school. Uh, but, uh, and somebody I, I have noticed in, no, that's up there already. Um, so somebody has a tendency to be more the disciplinarian in, a, in, a, in parenting, right? But what's interesting about being gay men is we don't know which one of us is going to do which of those roles. I don't buy the notion that because we're gay dads, we're gonna share all of the roles equally. I don't think that's the way it works. I think people have a tendency to slide in the direction of what comes you know, naturally for them. But interestingly, it doesn't end up being a package where you know I do all the, the mom-ish things as we've looked at stereotypically and he does the all the daddish stuff we we can we can split it up and share it in different ways which I think is um refreshing 
know. Mm-hmm. AJ, with you and Frankie, there is, uh, did you ever run into this? Like you're the mom, you're the dad. Oh my God, all the time. So when, it's funny you, uh, this topic is coming up because when we first moved into our house, our neighbor, we moved in and she's like, so who's going to do like the mom stuff? Or she, or she asked us like, which one of you are, are the mom? And I looked at her and I've like probably clutched my pearls and I'm like, excuse me? I was like, it, like I was taking it back, but I mean, we all, like you had mentioned, like we know we just take on roles. I love cleaning. As a young kid, I always love to clean for some reason. I'm like a neat freak. Whereas Frank leaves all the doors and everything open and leaves a mess. So, and he likes to cook, even though I'm the cooking teacher, but by the time I get home, I don't want to step foot in the kitchen. So he gladly takes over dinner and he makes a mess everywhere. And after dinner, I clean up. And that's just how things have always been. I've always, we just fit in your groove and I make lunches. He makes dinners. I'm an early riser. He stays up later. So it's like, we all, everything just meshes together and we just find our way and we don't sit down and say, okay, I'm going to do this. You're going to do that. We just... PJ, if you're a really big supporter of cleaning, West Hollywood, California, <laughs> you can just pop over there some work. Anyway, I'm booking well, my flight right now. Before we ask any other questions, I just want to say that uh, I, I hope I'm pronouncing it right. Hitten Patel has uh, put a message in the chat. Uh, is joining us from Nairobi, Kenya at two o'clock in the morning. It just, that's lovely. Thank you for joining um, Bill, I wanted to ask you, like you're a single dad, so... <laughs> Uh, do you ever get, like, I think your kid is, you know, uh, grown enough to really, you exp- have you experienced one of these, are you the mom, are you the dad, or is some is it something missing? Do you feel that? I you think- mean from a single perspective? Yeah, single. Um, gosh, I don't know. I mean, it's just, I don't know. Maybe it's just my, maybe it's just my group of, and most questions that I get from people, are there, they'll be literally like, where did Charlie come from? Like, we never see a woman anywhere. And that's kind of where it's like, well, I'm like, he, so you, he find, what's you, that? You find yourself that you have to explain the whole thing. Or yeah, you? I do. I do. Yeah. And then, awesome. yeah. And, yeah. yeah. And then, um, so I have to explain that. And then I have to explain the relationship with his brother, who is, you know, his actual half brother. And I mean, it's a lot of that, but it's usually where did he come from? And then, where is she and like do you know her and does Charlie know her and all this kind of stuff and so I mean I think the bigger challenge around that has always been more so with him than other people because I'm way less worried about their questions and opinions than I am of his you know and knowing who his tummy mommy is and that's who that's what he calls her and he knows her name and all that kind of stuff so it just it feels like that was the relationship and I think his exposure in terms of I mean, he does like um, Austin was saying earlier about having female role models in his life, but I think the, the nurturing, whether it's, I just don't feel like it's gender-based and it wasn't in my prior marriage when I was in a heterosexual relationship, it wasn't gender-based at all. I was a softy and, and everything else. And, and now I kind of do have to do a bit of both Charlie, but um, like I said, I just think the focus is more on him and how he's how he sees men caring for him in those roles and so that he doesn't grow up to put them like, oh, a mom would do that, a dad would do that, more like a loving, caring parent would do all that. Um, Austin, can I ask you, so when, when you are asked questions or you're in an environment with a lot of, with other straight you know, people, whether they're parents or not, um, do you feel like um, you, that there's a strategy behind the way you are responding or talking to them. Meaning, do you have a goal in talking to straight people and straight parents to um, present yourself and present the gays, um, you know, in a certain way? And if so, what do you what do you want them to know? Yeah, that's a good question. And I definitely do. I I try not to, but I always feel the need to educate people. Um, Just because we are a minority group, gay dads, there's not many of them. And people do have their own preconceived notions about what we should be based on stereotypes that they see on TV or on social media. So I I really like to put the point across that we're just normal parents. (laughs) Like, uh, we also don't relate to the characters on Modern Family. Like, 
we're just your run of the mill average dads looking after our kids. And I just try to get that point across that it, it's not, it's not not normal. Like our relationship with our kid is normal. Our family is normal. Everything about what we do is based around love, which is how every single family should be run. You know what I found that was a real surprise to me early on when, when the kids were babies and I'd be pushing them around. If I met, usually it was a mom and we talked a little bit. The next thing I knew, she would be saying something like, God, thank you so much. It makes me feel so much better to see that um, my, the, the experiences that I've had where it was really hard for me to have babies or whatever uh, is shared with other people. And in the, 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 the groups that I travel in, this woman would say to me, I'm not allowed to feel that way. So there's a certain amount of um, freedom that I have seen come from interacting with gay men that uh, that certain moms have. And I, I've appreciated that a lot. I don't know if any of the rest of you have experienced something like that. Yeah, I'm just gonna jump in here quick. Um, so I think there is a bit of a double standard there with um, moms and with dads. I have a bit of a story. So we have a colleague that we work with and he had a child at the same time and him and his wife decided to both take parental leave and what they found was, it's actually pretty upsetting, but when the father was working and the mom was on leave and the people on conference calls, you know, we're all working from home right now, they hear a baby crying. Their first reaction is, oh, dad, like, oh, he's doing such a good job. He's such a good dad. Like, it's fine. It's not a big deal if there's a baby crying. But the second those roles were reversed and the mother was working and there was a baby crying in the background, um, people's reactions were, why are you working? Why aren't you looking after your child? That's your job, essentially. Wow. And it, it's very strange that there is that, that double standard, but it definitely exists. Yeah. Yeah, agreed. Um, what do you guys feel that the expect, speaking about that, do you, do you feel that there's, and please feel free to jump in because I want to hear from uh, each of you. Uh, what are the expectations do you, do you think that the straight women have from us as, as gay dads, especially moms? Anyone? I just, I feel like the ones that I've known and have been friends of, I mean, kids are friends of Charlie's and whatnot has been, there's, there's it feels like there's more camaraderie and they feel when I'm with them, I feel, I mean, just going to say it, feel like one of the girls. But it's like, and they just immediately bring you in and you're just talking like the moms talk. I've had much different experiences with dads. They're not quite sure from my experience how to approach you, what to say. Do I do guy talk with you? Do I, you know, and then so just very narrow focused on the kids. Whereas the moms, you feel like the curtain has come down. You're one of them. They understand what you're doing. They see what you're doing. And whether it's because of their experience with their own husband or what it is, or whether they're glad to see dads doing the things we're doing, um, it's just much more um, welcoming and inclusive, I would say. And then the bottles of wine come out. Exactly. And then you drink together. Uh, wine. <laughs> yeah. Anybody I, else? Yeah. Well, one thing I was going to say is I noticed um, with a couple of my, my straight female friends, um, they were much more vulnerable with sharing things about their own, you know, journeys on becoming mothers. I had one friend who was who was going through IVF and I was able to, you know, not exactly relate, but I could, I understood what she was going through based on our own experience. And I found that that, that um, there's a lot more like, I don't know, trust that built, that builds quickly because, you know, if, if I share my story on, on our surrogacy journey, um, people are more willing to share things about, about themselves and, and what they're going through too. Sometimes unexpected, especially like, you know, at a, you know, you're getting your teeth cleaned or something and the dental hygienist is like, oh, I, you know, I had problems with fertility too. It's like, whoa, like that's, you know, so sometimes it's a little too much, but, um, but yeah, for, you know, for friends and stuff, it's been, I found that it's been, um, it's, a, it's, it's been uh, really interesting the way that people have opened up about it. I think that there's like a, there's a little bit of a twist and turn that explains it. Um, we're not women, 
So she doesn't have to worry that we're going to say, well, as a woman, I've already got this down and you don't. So I don't know what's wrong with you. We're men. So therefore, they can't really get it wrong with us. And I've noticed that experience. And, and I love it. I think it's actually incredibly warm and uh, a, a, a very comfortable relationship. I've even found it to be the case with women who start out asking at least some of the questions that I started with at the beginning. Not the really nasty ones, but like when they come, when they come to it with com complete ignorance, it can end up being a very positive and warm type of relationship. Yeah. Um, I want to talk about comparison. So I, I'll tell you about myself that I look a lot uh, at other other parents in, in specific, but also in, in general, but also specifically other moms to see what they feed their kids, what they doing, you know, like how many play day they have per week, you know, stuff like that. And I was wondering if you guys look at these thing, things and compare yourself to, to kind of, you know, feel that you're doing your role as a parent. So oh, yeah. whenever we go to the park, we're the worst because we never bring snacks for Milo or we don't bring money when the ice cream truck comes around. And then all of his friends are like, you know, the, it's usually always the moms because the moms are the best at packing stuff and having, well, they have a purse too, mostly, right? So they pack food, they pack wipes, they pack hand sanitizer, everything. And we're like, can we have a snack? Can we borrow a couple of, like, we're the worst when it comes to like going out with things. We're just, yeah, and yeah. uh, people are nodding. Joey? Yeah, I can definitely relate to that. I, as, as prepared as, as I try to be, I just, I can't beat out like my sister or any other female friend that I know who has kids. I get in their cars and they have all of the stuff that they need for the date, you know, out and about. And I'm just like, oh, I don't have that. And I'm taking mental notes like, okay, when I get home, I'm going to look into this and get that in my car or whatever it is. And that sometimes I, I do funny things like and with my narrative of like, I'm telling myself, okay, maybe I'm missing the mark here. I need to step up my game. Like I need to go out and get, and that again, ties into adding that pressure on you, right? To represent so that you can give that, you know, um, picture that as a gay dad, you have everything under control that you have all the things that you need. But sometimes I feel like I'm failing at that, but I think it's okay though. You know what you need? You need little tiny plastic boxes with grapes that have been cut in half. Apparently, <laughs> if you cut grapes in half, you're a good parent. If you just yeah. leave grapes whole, there's something <laughs> horribly wrong with you. Exactly. Um, also, it's not just with women. Um, we went out with a, a, a gay dad couple and they opened their bag and they removed a banana case. It was <laughs> the shape of a banana. And you open it and there's a banana inside. <laughs> and it is at that point we realize we are terrible, terrible parents. <laughs> uh, Bill, do you get, uh, are you the same? Are you prepared? Um, you know, I, I think it's just part of who I am being unprepared and a bit of a disaster everywhere I go. And the funny part is that in raising Charlie, I would still hang around. I'm still best friends with my ex-wife and something would happen. Charlie, whatever. And she'd be like, well, do you have wipes? And I'd be like, no. And she's like, well, do you have this? And I'd be like, no. And she's like, are you insane? And I'm like, yes. I mean, I don't know. So, I mean, it's just, I'm the same way as you guys. It's just, I, I don't feel like I'm ever prepared. I don't know why, because in other facets of my life, I can be completely prepared. But when it comes to him, it's just, I don't know how moms do it and think of everything in advance and have it. I have no idea how they do it, but I'd like to learn. I and mean, it's probably too late for me. You know, so I want to I want to ask a, a geography, sort of a geography question. Um, we were talking about modern family, um, so we basically live in where they live. I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be set, you know, within a few blocks. We live in West Hollywood, right? Nothing is more the bubble than West Hollywood. Um, and uh, what I want to ask each of you is. Do you consider yourselves to live in the bubble, bubble adjacent or outside of the bubble of extremely accepting um, of the LGBT community, et cetera? Uh, and how has it affected you? So let's, let's start with Ben. Ben, are you in the bubble? I, I would not say we're in the bubble. Um, in West Michigan, no. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I feel... There is a there is a, a pressure that I feel when meeting new people, you know, even starting at daycare, we were really nervous about 
Um, you know, how are they going to perceive us? What is, what's it going to be like? Are they going to ask weird questions? Um, we actually, <laughs> we were walking Evie uh, um, just, just up to a coffee shop and um, she likes tall soy lattes. It's really weird. Um, but uh, we passed this family that were just hanging out on their, on their deck. And, and, you know, as we walked back uh, on the way home, one of the guys was like, you know, it's just really good to see two guys come together to, to raise a, a little baby. And we were like, oh, what? Like, what on earth is happening right now? And, you Watch know, I, well, right. <laughs> yeah. and later on, I was like, we could be brothers. Like, where did they get that from? You know, um, so there is a there. I think a lot of especially around here, it's it's a relatively conservative area. We do get a little bit of, you know, pe people's preconceived notions are like modern family like that's what they that's what they see so kind of overcoming those stereotypes and just being like no we we don't have it together <laughs> you know or um you know it's preparedness like we get we get chastised from people at daycare every once in a while for like hey you know you got, don't have enough food so the next thing you know bringing in a truckload of food for her you know like finding those balances and stuff things that every parent goes through but um there is that pressure that we feel for sure all right uh, joey are you in the bubble uh I think I may be adjacent. I don't consider myself to be in a bubble, but I think that most of California tends to be very gay friendly. So, I mean, there There's are no a pockets. Zone in the middle there that I wouldn't, well, you know. San Diego or is it? Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, guess, yeah. I guess I guess I just, I, I, when I think of California, I really think San Francisco, California, LA, I'm sorry, San Diego, LA. I forget right. about the parts in the middle, but I'm not there. So. Um, I'm not, I, I would say San Diego is pretty much LGBTQ friendly. Um, we, like I said, we do have some pockets here or there, but they're very small, but I've never um, felt like I lived in an area that wasn't progressive enough. All right, how about, how about you, Austin? Yeah, I think I live outside of the bubble, but this year has been strange. Like I said, I'm a new dad and uh, Maya, that's my daughter's name, she was born during COVID. So we've only interacted with people that are our friends. We haven't had those external interactions with people who might not agree with our lifestyle. So I haven't encountered it yet, but I do feel like I'm in an area where I may encounter some pushback on that. Got it. Bill? Um, I would say in the bubble where I'm at in St. Paul. Um, and but I think the thing is, and this is probably common with a lot of other urban areas, is that Minneapolis and St. Paul, sure, you get one suburb ring out, and then it's like a bubble adjacent, and then outside that, and then it's like, <laughs> there's all sorts of it. So, I mean, I, I don't think that's, that's uncommon, but where I am particular, like, super, super bubble. All right. And be Oh, we're definitely out of the bubble. Uh, so we live in Toronto and Toronto is a very open to us LGBTQ friendly city. Uh, I push boundaries as much as I can. We live in a great community. Uh, we have, there's lesbian couples on our street. There's gay couples around the corner. Uh, it was funny. So during pride month, just uh, in June, walking around our neighborhood, we counted at least 50 pride flags hanging up on the houses. So we live in a very, very accepting community. Uh, we also, organized a pride event for our for the, our school and for the community so Milo actually led the pride parade that we met, that we did for our community which is really cool and there was about 100 people that showed up so which is nice to know that we live in a very accepting and we know that like there are some issues that have happened in years past and like neighbors and community they, like they're like we got your back like don't worry whereas my family they live in a smaller town well, they live in Niagara and it's a smaller town so and I'm constantly pushing boundaries with them and pushing language with them um, so yeah, I, we try our best and Milo knows that he's in a two dad family and we ask him like, is there, do other, do kids say anything? And he's like, no, nope, nobody says anything. So we, right now we're, we're pretty good. Yeah. You know, I think that that raises, um, a, a question that we haven't talked about yet at all, uh, but, but that BJ just talked about, which is, you know, when you're raising, when you're gay dads raising kids, you have this angle um, that a lot of uh, a lot of uh, parents don't have, which is, oh, my children are automatically growing up um, different by virtue of who their parents are. And I guess my question would be, what do you want them to feel as they go through early earlier stages? I don't know about, I don't know, Bill, about you know your 21 year old, but but 
earlier on, elementary school, right? Yeah. What do you want your kids to feel? Um, and how is it different than what maybe any parent would want their kids to feel? And since Bill, you've already gone, gone to the age of 21, did you say 21? Yeah. Let's start with you. It, so you're, I, I'm, I'm a little not clear on the question. Is it- I'm about... not either. <laughs> Look, I guess what I'm asking is this. Um, all parents probably want to imbue their children with certain strengths and sure. certain things. Um, but I think that gay parents have ah. a special um, desire to do that because of yep. circumstance. Yep. So what is it? What's that, that, what's that special sauce? It felt like, and it's the same thing with my eldest as well, because even back then, and my wife and I had gay friends, and Liam just grew up knowing that there were boys were couples and boys and girls. So it was really easy with him. And again, all part of being in that bubble. Um, I think it feels like with both of them, um, many, many years apart, but still just like the kind of the concepts of like, you know, equality and um, again, not assigning gender things. And Charlie likes glitter and unicorns. And I am totally, I know, right? I'm totally fine with them, but then he also likes squishing bugs with his fingers and being as gross as possible. So it's like, it's, you know, it's just, um, I think it's just allowing them to be themselves, but also reminding them, you know, the things that we've had to go through, the things that we've had to endure and as being a minority and try to fight for and inclusivity and all that stuff. I think it's the, the, the foundations of those things that we want to instill in our little, our little creatures so that they grow up to be really good humans too, you know, whether they um, are gay or not. And um, I just think that's, that's kind of what, you know, we feel like it's through our experience that we want our children to learn from what we went through, basically. Joey? So I think that um, in order to provide our children that thing that makes them feel comfortable with, you know, who they are and, and what type of parents they have, I think, obviously transparency about the whole process of how they were born through surrogacy very early on is important. I think that when you, you share this information from, from an early uh, age, you know, they understand what it is and they grow up feeling that that is their life, that is their story, and they become confident with that. And the most, the more that we as parents expose them to, you know, such things as pride and teaching them what, what that is and, and why that is, I think all of those types of things uh, will help them in building this secure sense of self and, and not feeling any different from anybody else because we're letting them know that there are more people uh, or, or other families that look exactly just like theirs. And even though they may be that one kid in the school or in their classroom with, the, the, uh, with, with, uh, with two dads, the only person there, they can also remember that there's a huge, there's a larger community out there where there are other kids that have other uh, two dads or two moms. And I think that, again, so educating them, exposing them to as much as we can, can be that thing, that secret sauce. You're here. BJ. Yeah, I just want to add, I completely agree with you, Joey. Like, um, we have a friend who also had her, their daughter through surrogate, and they haven't told her. She's almost seven now. And they haven't told her that she was born through surrogacy. And so, I, and I, like, it kind of blows my mind because she has two dads. So like there has to come a point where she's gonna understand, like gonna wonder where the heck did I, like who where did I come from or who out of who did I come from right, but uh, like you said right from the get go like and we've had questions like are you gonna tell Milo we're like of course we're gonna tell Milo we just spent the weekend or the last week up at our surrogate's house uh, and he calls them his cousins like she has two kids herself and he calls them her, her cousins he calls her by her first name by Kathy uh, and it's really important to know where your kids come from like you said, right, it's the foundation. They need to know who, who they are and they want to be proud of who they are. And even walking down the street, like he still holds our hands and he's still innocent enough where people will, I find it more, it happens on when we're away on vacation where people like point and, and, and stare and say things, but he still holds our hands and we just, we have to be proud of who we are. And if we're proud, they're going to be proud. Here, here. Ben. I think a lot of it is, you know, having that confidence and and joey i love the word you use transparency with like where how our family was was created um you know for me and eric we were really lucky that my sister was our egg donor 
Um, so we have this really cool connection and it's like, that's really special. That's something to be proud of. And I, you know, when I grew up, I, I knew I was gay really young, like probably kindergarten, I knew I was different. And then over, you know, after a couple of years, I was like, oh, that's what it is. And then I was like, oh crap. Um, and I just, you know, I never want Evie to have to feel that way. <laughs> I never want Evie to feel that way. And so I think setting that example for her and, um, and showing her, you know, different variations of families, like families, you know, sometimes it's one parent, sometimes it's two, sometimes it's two dads, sometimes it's mom and dad, showing her all of those, um, those different, um, variations um, to show her what love looks like, and I think that's that's kind of that's kind of our strategy right now. <laughs> Austin, yeah, I resonate with all of the dads here. Being honest and truthful is our policy up front with our daughter. We want her to know where she came from. We also have a relationship with our surrogate and a relationship with our egg donor. Um, they're both a part of our lives, and they will be a part of our daughter's life. And I just want our daughter to be able to know that different isn't bad. Our differences should be celebrated. Every family's a little different. Some will have two dads, some will have two moms, but it's okay. And you can be totally uniquely yourself and you should be happy with who you are. And if you're not, then let's figure something out. I want you, like, I want my daughter to be as happy as she possibly can be. Yeah. You know, um, when we started taking our kids to school, when they were, I guess, three, um, there was this discussion about Mother's Day. And there, I, we've spoken to other gay dads who have requested that it be turned into Parents' Day or, or whatever, and, and that's fine. My attitude was, no, it's Mother's Day. You just don't happen to have one of those. And the reason why what Austin, you just said, it kind of resonates with me is because I don't want my children to feel like they're just like everyone else. I want them to feel like whatever differences they have can be embraced and it's cool and it's good. And, I, and I'll just tell you that uh, uh, one, of, one of my kids likes to, likes to dance. And uh, about a year ago, what Bruno Mars song was it? Uptown Funk. Uptown Funk. We're playing Uptown Funk. And he lost his shit, this five-year-old kid. He was like, I don't know the different things, dropping it like it's hot. I don't know what the hell he was doing, but he was all over the place. And all I could think to myself is, I can only hope and pray that my children will grow up continuing to do that shit, both literally and figuratively in front of anyone they want to and being proud of, of that and, you know, letting their freak flag fly. So, you know, that, that, that is, that has been a really exciting thing for me to see that my kids are developing this kind of sense of who they are. And, uh, you know, if you don't like it, and that makes me very happy. Um, we're closing, uh, well, toward, uh, getting towards the end. Um, I wanted to, there, there are a lot of uh, prospective dads who are uh, watching us today. Um, and I want us to talk a little bit to them. So they will probably will experience what we are, we're experiencing. Um, and I noticed at the beginning of the discussion when Alex uh, asked you questions, some of the questions were, some of the answers were, like explanatory, like you're you're here to explain, and some of them were like "fuck you," so cool, you know, so like different. deal with that. So, and I and I think that all of us probably have engaged in some form or another with both of that scenarios. So I want us, I want to get an advice for from each of you for these prospective dads, how to deal with. Um, the, when, when you feel like you're being judged or be, you're being, people who are coming to you, whether it's on social media or on real, on real life, in real life, um, and tell you or imply that you're doing something wrong or something that should be that not good enough, um, or just asking questions, uh, what would be your, your advice to them? Ben. You got to pick somebody. Ben. I, I think, I don't know, because I, I struggle with this when it, when it happens. Like when the, that guy said that to us, we couldn't think on our feet fast enough to say something. We were just like, well, she likes having two dads. Like we didn't know what to say. So sometimes that's a strategy too. Like just make fun of it. Like 
because that's a, that's an absurd thing to say to anybody. Oh, it's so great to have two people come, you know, two dads come together. You'd never say that to anybody else. So sometimes you can be like, like comedy is a strategy. I mean, you know, being funny and making a joke of it. And I think maybe that sometimes sheds a light on like kind of how silly that question is or some of those questions are. Um, and other times it's okay to just be like, nope, we're, I'm not dealing with this and just like leave the situation depending on what it is. I, it's not always worth engaging. I, but I think at times too, if it's somebody that, you know, maybe it is worth sharing an experience and then kind of opening people's eyes. So I hate saying that like it depends, but it kind of does depend on the situation. BJ? Yeah, I agree with you, Ben. Uh, I think that you have to assess the situation and see, you know, what type of response you're going to come up with. And sometimes it's hard to come up with something on the spot, but I think that if you have the time to assess, okay, is this a moment where I'm going to educate someone and hopefully that education will, you know, uh, broaden their um, perspective. Um, or again, I think humor is a good way to go, you know, just saying something like, oh, well, thank you very much for your feedback. I'll, I'll take that into consideration um, or whatever, and just kind of walking away or whatever it is. But I think that, I don't think there's a, a real good, like there aren't really like something that you could say, like these are the shoulds and these are the, 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 the don'ts. Um, I just think it just depends on the experience um, and assessing the situation and then being able to give the response based on what you what you want the goal to be or the outcome to be. It's, I would add or, or say that when Milo was born, uh, we would always have a lot of unsolicited advice from mothers and grandmothers like, oh, you need to cover his feet. He's, his feet are going to get cold. He's going to get sick. You need to hold the bottle up higher. And all we just said, we just said, oh yeah, okay, sure. Mm -hmm. You just take it with a grain of salt because people who are experienced, they want to share their experience with you too. So we just were like, yeah, okay, sure. Mm -hmm, no problem, whatever. And when you're out the other, uh, and in terms of like with messages and, and hate, like we've had some really nasty things said to like, you wouldn't believe some of the stuff that has been said to us. And I think as time goes on, um, you just grow, you get a thick skin and you're just like, whatever. And like with any of these messages that I still receive, I always hit, hit them back with sarcasm. And I like to entertain them because people like this are, they're idiots. And I just like to see how stupid they actually are. <laughs> so I just feed into them, right? And I, like, the, I do it for, for entertainment purposes on my side because these people are just, morons but uh okay, so engaging with trolls on the internet is oh, okay so don't engage okay so uh, i'm not sure if some, our birth photo went viral when milo was born and there was a lot of hateful comments that was said and at first i was like very overwhelmed with all the hate because here we are having milo born it was a beautiful moment in our life and then having to deal with all the the trolls out there so i learned frank was like and there were so many so many messages of, of love and support that that came out from everybody so and frank's like just focus on the positive like don't like those people are just trolls and then uh a few years later politicians in italy were using our photo too right and then again the whole thing started coming back and that's when i was just like okay i'm not engaging on any negative negativity and all those you just have to delete right and it's not worth your time it's not worth a headache because these people are just they want to pick an argument with you so you awesome. just have to disengage. Yeah, I think if it's outright hate, uh, you should just walk away. There's no point in engaging with that. Respect yourself. Like, just ignore those people. If it is someone who, at first glance, you think they're being ignorant or maybe they're being rude, maybe they just don't have all of the information. So I really do try to just go out of my way and educate people um, as long as it isn't outright hateful. Yeah, Bill? Yeah, I basically would just echo everything the guy said. I, but I think looking for the teachable moments, I mean, know your audience. So look for the teachable moments with the people who you can, I mean, we're all in this together and the more people we inform about it, the more they know about it, the more educated they are, breaking stereotypes, all that stuff. I think that's good for all of us. So I think looking for those teachable moments, but again, know your audience. And then also in person, as opposed to social media, because you, you never know what you're going to get and you never know you just never know. So I would say just be very wary of that. And there's going to be the haters. They're always going to be there no matter what. And just stay focused on your family and your kids being a good dad. You know, um, when the Supreme Court in the United States decided that gay marriage or, or same-sex marriage would be the law of the land, they also established a law that all gay dads need to have either a podcast 
or a major Instagram presence. It's, it's required by law. Um, but obviously that's not true. And the reason why I, I, I raise it is because um, I think everybody in this panel are outgoing people. And I think that for everybody in this panel, it is probably somewhat comfortable to have those interactions. But I realize that there are plenty of gay men who just wanted to have a private life of having a kid. And all of a sudden, people coming up to them and talking to them about it can be very difficult. The only thing I would say uh, to them, uh, you know, that they should they should interact in whatever way makes them comfortable. But I would only say to them that stigma is a two-way street. Um, there are the people doing the stigmatizing and there are the people who are allowing the stigma to enter. And, you know, developing, I can't remember who it was, I think maybe it was BJ, uh, developing a thicker skin and just sort of shrugging and moving on um, can also be an incredibly valuable way of not only keeping yourself protected, but making the other person feel like, oh, well, wait a minute, perhaps what I just asked was a little, was a little off. Maybe I'll think about it, you know? So I don't think everybody needs to be in constant PR mode, um, but, um, but where, where you can educate, that's, that's wonderful. I want to uh, end, we have just a couple of minutes left. I want to end on a lighter note. Um, and I wanted to ask you, so we, we were talking about um, uh, negative uh, and stigma and prejudice. I want to talk a little bit about what do you think that you give your children that straight parents cannot? And by that, Ooh. make your children better, better, better. <laughs> I want to say an example from us. Um, I'm a huge, nobody really in America knows what it is. It's a Eurovision fan. I'm a oh. Eurovision fan. Um, Eurovision Song Contest. Our kids by now know not only the, all of the Eurovision songs from the last couple of years, they know all the countries, they know where the countries are in Europe, they know the flags of the countries. So they know geography in a really outstanding way that you wouldn't expect. To as long as they participate in Eurovision. In Eurovision. Otherwise, the country um, doesn't. And that's really, every time that comes up, in a, in a situation with other parents, like people are insanely amazed by, by the knowledge of their geography. Look, Jan um, is asking you to brag about your superior so, parenting, so exactly. let's do it. Exactly, so let's do it. Uh, let's, let's start with Austin. Oh, superior parenting skills, okay. Um, well, I think I'm very creative and outgoing and I hope that I can imbue that in Maya. Um, She's not old enough yet, but I'm sure we'll be doing lots of arts and crafts and getting those creative juices flying as soon as we can. All right. Um, Joey. Um, so my daughter is also very young, but I do hope to instill a lot of creativity in her. So in my in myself, so I'm not only a therapist, but I'm also a dancer. I'm also a hairstylist. I'm all these things. And I want to be able to give all of those things to her to learn many different things and encourage her to be all that she wants to be. Um, and I think that that is the best thing that I can give her as a parent is that encouragement that unconditional love and just supporting her and being her. All right, Bill. Cool. Um, I was gonna say actually like, just like self-expression, like, and because he is a boy, it's like, if you want to like dance and like, you know, shake your booty, like go for it. And I think that just the encouragement of that and me doing it with him, you know, and it's like, and in the music combined, it's like, you know, it's from Madonna, Britney, Dua Lipa. I mean, he, Kylie, he, I mean, he knows them all and he's like, play Robin. And it's like, so he knows. And it's like, I think that, I don't think he would have gotten that with the straight dad. Probably not. But anyway, but, and also just like, and feeling free to do it, feeling free to like, move your body and express yourself and not be embarrassed and listen to this, you know, disco queen singing and just being loud and proud, whether he grows up to be gay or not. Teaching your kid dis disco queens, it's really important. Disco okay. is important. Oh, yes. <laughs> uh, ben. I think, you know, two things come to mind. So creativity, definitely. Um, I, I knit and I sew. And so like the baby pictures were all like knitted sweaters and stuff like that. And I just, you know, it makes me really happy to, to make stuff for people. And I hope that she takes that away. And also just marching to the beat of your own drum. Um, Eric and I are really goofy dads and we're starting to see some of that goofiness in her. Like she makes this face like, 
full, we call it the scrunchy face. And <laughs> we just, we love it. Like that, that she has those little, you know, she's, she's quirky and funny already. So a little bit of that. BJ. You asked this question because I was actually speaking to my colleague a few weeks back about this exact thing. And I was just telling her that to be a parent to Milo, I try to take the best qualities that I had from both of my parents growing up. Forget their like the the mean things or whatever, but like the their best qualities I try to embody, and then I try to put that onto Milo because I try to be the best parent that I can be. And he like both Frank and I were very artistic and creative, and Milo loves his art. He loves drawing, and he uh, he says he wants to be a cooker like Papa, which is which I don't cook, but I bake. But anyways, uh, but he wants to be like, and he just wants to do everything that we want to do. So I, and that's it. Just let your kids be expressive and be who they are, and 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 be there to guide them and support them and raise them up. When I was, when my, when one of my kids was three years old, we were watching The Little Mermaid and the scene with Ursula, the, 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 the sea witch came on um, and he recoiled in horror. And I said, honey, it's okay. It's just a movie. And he said, so much lipstick. <laughs> and I just felt that <laughs> Hi, Lisa. It was such a great panel. I loved listening along. Thanks everybody for uh, sharing your stories and, and your insights into parenting. And I hope um, for everybody listening along, whether you're uh, deep in the trenches of parenthood or just getting started and in, in thinking about becoming a dad, you do what? Do it, do it. Yes, do oh, it, go do for it. it. <laughs> uh, and as much as, you know, there are no guarantees in life, um, I'm just going to go out there and say it. You guys are going to be amazing parents. Your children are going to be wonderful. And, you know, however you, you approach parenthood or however you approach your journey, um, it's going to be a wonderful one uh, and authentically yours. So I'm so glad uh, that you guys joined us. And thank you so much to our amazing dads here today sharing their stories. And we hope um, whether it's virtual or in person, um, we hope to see each and every one of you guys back for future events here with men having babies. And if there's anything we can do to help you on your journey to fatherhood, we hope that uh, you'll let us know and uh, and good luck as you um, move forward on your journey. Bye, everyone. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you.